<laughs> Let's do that again. <laughs> no, never, never. Hey, my name is Mark. I'm one of the pastors here, and I'm so glad that you're here today uh, in the venues and online. Uh, and today we're talking about um, questions for God. And the question that I'm having today is, um, is God real? So that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at, is God real? Now, we could say, nope, and then we're just going right now, so that's okay. But we're going to actually say, there probably is a God, okay? And so let me tell you, Psalm 19 is a poem, and, and King, uh, King David was the guy who, who got this, and he said, and so King David said in Psalm 19, he says, The heavens declare the glory of God. Let me say that again. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Isn't that amazing? What the saying is that basically when you look up in the skies and you see that, you know, the sun, the moon, the stars, all these things all of a sudden you just realize that there has to be someone who created this. There has to be somebody. We call him God. You can call it whatever you want. But we call it God. This is it. Again, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Basically, you know what God is saying? God is saying, look around. Look around. Look everywhere. Because everywhere it shows that I am here, that, that God is here. That is what God does. This is what he does. It's just it's amazing when you stop to think about this. But, but everyone wonders about God from time to time. It's the, na- it's the nature of, it's the, of faith. So, let me give you a verse. Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11, verse 1 says this. What is faith? Stop and think about that. In your mind, what, what does that mean? What is faith? It is the evidence. It's the evidence of things we cannot yet see. If we could see it, it wouldn't be faith. We have to look and see what God is doing. And I'm going to tell you, uh, I'm going to tell you, this is an amazing time, because um, sometimes God does things to us. Let me ask you a question. You, I'm not going to ask you to, to do anything but raise your hand. Have you, ha- do you know that God has ever spoken to you? If so, raise your hand. Oh, that's so good. Okay. I felt like I was the only one. Okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's just crazy. You know, let me let me tell you let me tell you a story. Um, when I was uh, when I was in se- about I think seventeen, I was seventeen years old, and I was out in the country. That's where we lived, and we had cows and we had and horses and everything. And I was out there w- working with the animals, and um, and all of a sudden, I mean, I I heard something, something that wasn't out here. But I heard it in here, and I'm, and I'm 17 years old, I'm out in the country, I'm working with the animals, and all of a sudden I hear this thing, and what I heard is this, Mark, I want you to pray for your wife that you don't even know about. And what do you do to, what do you say to that? <laughs> really, what, what, do you, what do you say to that? So I'm kind of going, and then I go like, you know, and I, and I start to work with the animals again, and then all of a sudden, again, a little louder, in here, not out here, in here, Mark, I want you to pray for your wife that you don't even know yet. And I thought, after two times, okay. And you know what I did? So I got the horses and the cows and myself, and we all had, we put hoofs, and we were praying. <laughs> no, we didn't do that. <laughs> well, we could have. But anyway, but I just right there, right there by the animals, I just said, 
God, I don't understand what's going on. But Lord, you know who my wife is going to be at some point. So God, I just pray for her, whoever she is. And over the next, I'm going to say, six, seven, eight years, I would pray for her. Not knowing who she was and what was going on or anything like that. But what's interesting, what's interesting, nine years later, I met her. And we got married. And I asked her, well, excuse me, but no, let me back it up. We, we didn't get married yet. I wanted to make sure if, the, if she was the right one. So I said this. I said, when you were a kid, did you almost die of, about something? And she said, yeah. And so she told me what was going on, where she could die, and all this kind of stuff. And, and I'm going, okay. I said, um, how old were you when that happened? And she said, I was 14. Well, I am three years older than her, and I was 17. And I'm going, the, the, the math is working. So let's get married. No, I don't. <laughs> that's, that's not the reason why I did that. <laughs> but, but I'll tell you, I mean, God does things like this. I'll tell you, if you say that God doesn't speak to you, you're not listening. God talks to us. God tells us things to do. And we have to listen. Kind of like me, the first time, I'm like, oh, no, that, that's, that's what's crazy. But the second time, I'm like, okay, this is real. God speaks to us. And if he hasn't speaking to you, you're not listening. God is a great God. He loves to talk to us. But for some reason, we just don't. Listen, oh my goodness, wow. So, so I got married to the right girl. And God says, look at the stars. Look at the stars. Because that points to me, God, that I am here, that I created everything you see, the sun, the moon, the stars, everything. That is a pointer to show that God is here and he's real. That is what he does. And I'm going to tell you, oh, man. So last night, I went, into my, uh, I went out in the backyard because it was finally kind of a nice day. And, um, and it was dark. And I love to go in the backyard in the dark because I want to look up to the, the sky and see all the stars and the, new, and the moon and everything. And so I went out there, and I was looking there for a little bit, and then I went in for, to get a drink or whatever, and I came out, and the stupid clouds came in. <laughs> but you know where I'm going to be tonight? Backyard. Because there's something, at least for me, there's something, at least for me, that I, I love to sit and look at the sky and see the, the moon and the stars. Because when I look at that, something, I can't, I, I don't know how to word this, but I feel like I'm in church. Because I know that God created all of that. I believe that. God believes in you. Do you believe in God? God believes in you. Do you believe in him? This is what we got to realize. We believe there is a God. But a lot of people, maybe some of you, maybe you're the first time here in, in, a, in any kind of church. This is the first time you've ever been here. Or maybe you're online right now watching this and you're going, ah, I don't really know if there's about a God. I just don't know about that. Again, God believes in you. Why not trust God? Just try it. Just try it. This is what God does. God is a good, good God. So, from tonight to all the way summer, I'm going to be in my backyard looking up in the sky. Because that, for me, is kind of like church. To just see what God is doing it's just crazy. 
So we're talking about, let's talk about some pointers to God's existence. One of the things I'm going to give you is this. The exist, the exist, the little, uh, the <laughs> we're talking about stuff. And here's the thing. Uh, people that are atheists have trouble with stuff because they're going, okay, now the stuff is here. Um, why is it here? How is it? All this kind of stuff. I mean, that's just a tough thing. The, uni- the universe exists. It's, it's, a, it's real. It's true. And all these things are going on. God is doing so much stuff. And there, then we come to cause and effect. Cause and effect. And effect. And I'm going to use my shirt. Cause and effect. So you were saying, well, Mark, um, you're wearing your, T, your, your C3 church, right? You've seen that. Well, how did you get, how'd you get there? Well, I went into my closet. I took it off, and I put it on. Okay. Well, I see that there's letters on there. How did that get there? Well, somebody probably put that on there, right? That's cause and effect. That's what, that's what God does. God does those things. That's a crazy thing when you stop to think about it. But this is what we have to know. God understands everything. God understands everything, the sun, the moon, the stars, and all of us. He knows everything about us. And the reality is this. God is the only person in the whole world and over the, the, the stars and everything else. There's the, the only person that doesn't have to be dependent. Everything else is dependent. Everything else is dependent. Let me give you a couple things that I found this week. Um, trees. If we didn't have air, we wouldn't have trees because trees would be dead. Well, we also haven't, we wouldn't be here either, you and me, but, um, but, but they, a tree needs to have air. Let's talk about the Seattle Seahawks. What are they depend upon? Depend upon? They're about, they, they need to have players to, to exist. They need a fans. They need they need to have a, a person that'll pay their, their stuff. All of these different things that they are doing. And for some reason, some reason, the Seahawks are dependent on all these other people. It's just crazy when you stop and think about it. Think about the sun. The sun is dependent on the solar system and on gravity and a, probably a whole bunch of other things, things that I probably don't even know about. Even the sun is dependent. But I'm going to tell you, God is not dependent. God is the one that takes care of all of this stuff. This world, this universe, you, me, God is the only one who doesn't have to be dependent. This is what he does. It's just crazy when you stop to think about it. So let me kind of, let me try to dumb this down to make it simple for most of us. And here's the things we're going to look at. I'm going to talk to you about a lot of different things. But I'm going to tell you the how, how some people think what happened. So let me just, let me, let me give this to you. Some people think, hmm, where did this come from? Where did this come from? And people will look at that and they say, well, well, a billion years ago, something banged. We don't know what banged, but something banged. And after that, it came into like some kind of this little thing right here. And you look at that and you go, huh, well, that's interesting. And then about a few billion more, all of a sudden, here's some, here's some tin that goes around it, and then about another 10 millions. All of a sudden, there's a little crease right at the top, and then if you open it up, water can get in there or something else can be in there, and it's just, it's just crazy, right? No. 
That's just, I mean, think of that. And then, and then, and then maybe, maybe a few million years more, all of a sudden, paint came down, and, and it spelled the word S-P-R-I-T-E. People actually believe this stupid stuff. They think all of the stuff was made back then. I'm going to tell you, everything's made by God. Everything is made by God. Everything is made by God. Every. Guess what? God made you. And God made you and God made me. And God loves us and wants a relationship with him. And we go, eh, I don't know if there's a real God. I just, I just don't know. Look at the stars. Look at everything that God has done. God is a great God. You may not believe in him, but he believes in you. And he loves you. And he wants you to have a relationship with him. That is what he does. He loves you and me. It's just crazy. And let me, you guys are thinking probably I'm going to be doing my lunch here, but uh, here I'm going to tell you. <laughs> but let's talk about a, ba a banana. Think about the banana. This is something that God created. And look how he did it. It fits right in our hands. And... And they have a, a, you know, a, a pop thing here so you can open it up, right? And God even did something, something amazing. So amazing. God says, if it's green, don't eat it yet. <laughs> if it's yellow, okay, it's time to eat. If it's black, don't eat it. <laughs> right? I mean... God did all of that. Really? I mean, just, and that's just a banana. Just imagine what God can do. Oh my goodness, it's just crazy what God does. God created everything, He created this. And for some reason, we say, no, it came by some other thing, but it wasn't God. Hmm. I'm going to tell you. If there wasn't a planet Earth, we wouldn't be here. God created everything. God created this world. God created you. God created me. God created this church. God created everything. Everything. How can we say there is no God? How? How can we say that? It just doesn't make sense. And look at this. Let me give you a verse. Romans 1.20 says this. It says, for since, this, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, uh, his eternal power and divine nature have, listen to this, have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made so that, listen to this, so that men are without excuse. In other words, what God is saying is, you better understand that I made everything. Because men are without excuse. Everything you see, everything you've done, everything, God created those things. Everything. But for some reason, we think we did it. Well, so we have a daughter. And we're going, well, I could say, yeah. Well, my wife and I, we created this daughter. Oh, okay, a little bit. I could send that, see that. And then the people back then went and more. And you go back and back and back and back until you finally get to Adam and Eve. And then who created Adam and Eve? Say it again. God. It all starts with God. Every, everything starts with God. Everything starts with God. This is what God does. Do you believe that? Do you believe that there is a God? 
because he believes in you. And he loves you, and he wants a relationship with you, and he cares for you. That is what he does. He just wants to be there. He wants to help in all these things. And one of our pointers we're going to talk about is this, our sense of right and wrong. Oh, my goodness. Can I ask you a question? I want to ask you a question. How many of you, just, I'm just going to have you raise your hand. How many of you have done something wrong and you knew it? That was about 50%. <laughs> so the ones that did not raise their hand are saying, I've never done anything wrong at all. Wow. Okay, that's great. That's awesome. Okay. Oh, you're going to hell, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. But here's what it, takes, it talks about. Romans, Romans 12, uh, 14 says this. Um, Even when Gentiles who do not have, excuse me, uh, who do not have God's written law instinctively follow what the law says, they shall, they sh- man, boy, I need glasses, good grief. <laughs> uh, they shall show it in their hearts and they know from right from wrong. In other words, what they're saying Uh, Gentiles are not followers of Jesus Christ, but they understand right and wrong. Even people that aren't with Jesus, that have a relationship with God, they still know what's right and wrong. Where do they learn that? From God. God tells us what's right and wrong. You could be somebody that's not a Christian, and you can still believe that it's wrong to murder. Why, why do we know that that's okay? To say that you should not be murdering people. God. Just stop and think about it. Everything starts with God. Everything starts with God. This is God's heart. This is what God wants. This is what God's plan is. And God tells us this. God tells us in Scripture, he tells us this, that uh, there's, he, he, re, he reveals himself to us in two ways. The first one, I'm going to put it up here. I think it's going to come up there. Maybe not. Okay, that's fine. Um, he told, the first one is, he told us about himself in the Bible. God tells him in the Bible about, I'm, hey, I'm God. I'm God. It's all about me. It's not about you. And let me just remind you of that. When you come into a relationship with God, it's not about you. It is not about you, and it's not about me. It's all about God. And I'm going to tell you, when you come to God, it's about Him. Everything is about Him. And when we come into a relationship with Him, everything changes. Everything changes. We change. We do not do the things that we did before. It's not about us. It's all about God. So God revealed himself in two ways. He showed us himself in his Bible, and he, and he showed Jesus Christ, his son. There is a God. You can say no. You can walk out of here and say, that was the stupidest thing. I just wasted a lot of time. There's no God. But can I tell you, when you're on your deathbed, I'm pretty sure you're going to have a different thought. You're going to be saying, God, forgive me. And God will probably say yes. Because God wants every one of us to be in relationship with him. That is what God does. God is a good, good God. Why does God love us? I, let's be honest. Why does God love us? I mean, we screw up so much stuff. We, we messed up this whole world. Why, God, why? Why? 
Because he's in love with us. Because he's the heavenly father and we are all of his kids. And I'm going to tell you, God loves us. Why? I don't know. I don't know why he loves us. We have messed up so much stuff and ruined so much stuff and done bad things so much time. But for some reason, he still stays with us. And he still loves us. And he still cares for us. That is what he does. Oh, my goodness. Even in your sin, he still loves you. And he wants you to say, come into a relationship with me because I can help you with this. And there are so many that says, I just can't. God, I've done so much bad things. There's no way you can forgive me. And God says, try me. Try me. I died on a cross for you so that I will take your punishment. That is what he does. Nobody else would do that. But Jesus, God in flesh, just crazy, just amazing thing. So God says in order to have a relationship with him, we only need to have two things. And what are those two things? Believe and receive. Believe that he exists and receive his love, forgiveness, and leadership. Hmm. Can I tell you? Even if you don't believe in God, God created you, which means you are his property. And God is saying to this, I want you to live over my house. I want you to live in my house. I want you to be part of me. I want you to do this. And we say sometimes, I can't do that. I've done so bad things, so horrible things. I just can't do it because I'm so bad. And he says, it's okay. I've taken it away for you. And I love you, and I want you to come into a relationship with me. That's the God we have. There is a God. He believes in you. You are his property. He created you. And he loves you, and he wants you to come into a relationship with him. Today, I'm going to close out with a song, and we're going to show it right now.
So, Father, today we pause right now. And, Lord, we just thank you for all that you've done for us. You love us. You want us to have a relationship with you. God, I thank you for everything that you have ever done for us. And so, Lord, I just pause right now for those that are online or those that are in the venues right now that don't have a relationship with you, or they did have it one time, but they fell out of that. So, Lord, I pray right now. I pray for each person to bow their heart and look inside and say, God, do I have a relationship with you? And, Lord, I know there's many that say yes. But, Lord, there are some that have never come into a relationship with you, or maybe they had a relationship, but they lost it. And it's time to come back, or come back for the first time. And so, Lord, I just pray right now for each person. I know, God, that your heart, your heart is that they would come into relationship with you. And, Lord, I thank you because you always say yes. Yes, I will forgive you. Yes, you can come in relationship with me. Yes, I love you, and I want you to be with me now and in heaven. And Lord, I thank you for what you're doing. And we celebrate that because right now, even if just one says yes, God, that is worth it. And we love you and we say thank you in your amazing name.